Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday meditation gathering. I'm so glad you're all here to share this time together. This week, we have Sabir Muslim to lead us in meditation, and then we'll have 20 minutes of silence. After that, we'll open it up for sharing your comments and your questions, and we'll end at approximately 10.45. Over to you, Sabir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yes, uh, I'd like to uh, start the meditation with a excerpt from the course, which is less than 107 uh, from A Course in Miracles, which is truth will correct all errors in my mind. And I'd like to read the first three paragraphs. So what can correct illusions but the truth? And what are errors but illusions that remain unrecognized for what they are? Where truth is entered, errors disappear. They merely vanish, leaving not a trace by which to be remembered. They are gone because without belief, they have no life. And so they disappear to nothingness, returning whence they came. From dust to dust, they come and go for only truth remains. Can you imagine what a state of mind without illusions is, how it would feel? Try to remember when there was a time, perhaps a minute, maybe even less, when nothing came to interrupt your peace, when you were certain you were loved and safe. Then try to picture what it would be like to have that moment be extended to the end of time and to eternity. Then let the sense of quiet that you felt be multiplied a hundred times and then be multiplied another hundred more. And now you have a hint, not more than just the faintest intimation of the state of mind uh, you will rest in when the truth has come. Without illusions, there could be no fear, no doubt and no attack. When truth has come, all pain is over for there is no room for transitory thoughts and dead ideas to linger in your mind. Truth occupies your mind completely, liberating you from all beliefs in the ephemeral. They have no place because truth has come and they are nowhere. They cannot be found for truth is ev everywhere forever now. And I just wanted to read that and just invite everyone just to remember the truth and that if anything is being experienced let truth correct that error that is being held in mind the course says i'm only affected by my thoughts and i'd just like everyone to invite the holy spirit to pray for a miracle and to let all illusions all errors disappear for this meditation. I'd also like to share one of my experiences, as that's what the, the lesson asks, just to remember the truth. And it was a, a long time ago when I was in a lot of distress with my kidney failure uh, and searching for the truth. And I met a, a teacher uh, here in London, a spiritual teacher, and he talked about going beyond the ego to recognize what's beyond the ego. And I had a one-to-one -one meeting with him. And uh, I woke up in the morning and I, was at, and, and I had this uh, meeting with him to find out what I was beyond my ego perception. And I was absolutely terrified. And I woke up with a horrific gout attack. I was having these gout attacks at the time. I had kidney failure. All kinds of illnesses were going on. And it's like my ego manifested this huge pain in my feet. Like I didn't want to go. My ego didn't want to disappear and to lose its grip on its suffering that I was experiencing at the time. Anyway, I, there was this kind of intuition like I mustn't miss my chance. So I hobbled on in pain and I met the spiritual teacher and he asked me what I am beyond my thoughts. And I said, well, when I practice, I'm aware of a witnesser behind my thoughts. And then he said, well, what's behind that witnesser? And the world disappeared in infinite white light. It was like light, power, and love that was so un unimaginable.
that the world obliterated in, in the infinity of light. Not even thoughts or anything could exist there. And I was in that experience, it seemed I was in that experience, it was timeless for a period. And then it seemed a thought emerged, and I was back in the room with the teacher, but now I was in a state of absolute bliss and tears were rolling down my eyes and I, could, I couldn't really speak. I just wanted to just be there in bliss for all eternity. And the teacher ushered me out into the street because I was more or less speechless. And, uh, and it was like everything was seen in technicolor. The whole world was like 10 times more bright. Uh, there was no experience of body. And later on, it was realized that the pain in my feet had totally disappeared. There was no experience of body. It was like the timeless instant. What had been uh, earlier in the morning seemed to be darkness and pain and suffering and experience of the body and time had all disappeared. And it was just absolutely astonishing that how the thoughts that I hold in mind create my suffering and create time and pain. And uh, just like to, uh, it was just this knowingness that I create my own suffering by making these thoughts I hold in mind so special and so meaningful, making my body so meaningful for I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. And I only experience the thoughts that are meaningful for me. When I make a thought meaningless, I no longer experience it. So with that, I'd just like to, uh, you know, allow us all to go into meditation, to just let go of anything. You know, the, the thing that I can only suffer my body if I make it meaningful. I suffer my thoughts. But there is something here where all of this can disappear. And it's like the holy instant, the timeless instant, the bodiless instant, the thoughtless instants can arise in this moment. Thank you.
Open your eyes slowly and come back into the room. We have approximately 18 minutes left for sharing your comments and your questions. If you'd like to speak, raise your hand, or you can use the reactions button at the bottom of your screen, or, uh, or the, hand at the hand signal at the bottom of participant screen, and I'll take you off of mute. If you'd like to ask Sabir a question or comment with confidentiality, put your message in the chat function at the bottom of the screen, and I'll read it out. Terry. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, Sabia. Um, morning, Terry. I enjoyed reading your article in the, uh, the Miracle Network magazine recently. I found it very um, insightful and you, you seem to have had uh, a profound awakening, if you don't mind me saying. Can I ask you a personal question? Do you please uh, do. Yes, please. In front of everyone, and it's yes. going on YouTube and all the rest of it. Sure, sure. <laughs> good man, good man. So, how, if you experience physical symptoms, you've, you've spoken about going beyond. Yes. You know, and, and kind of awakening to the truth of who you are beyond the body, if you like, you know, the freedom to be experienced there. Yes. So, for instance, you get toothache or yes. you get digestive problems. Would you, you know, look to, to take something physically or would you look to correct your mind and your thought? How, where are you on, on those kind of things to be, if you don't mind me asking? That's a, such a beautiful question. And uh, thank you so much, Terry, for asking. It's one of my actual, actually, uh, physical illness um, is one of my favorite uh, applications uh, for the course. Uh, and in fact, it was why I was attracted to the course. Um, uh, meeting a spiritual teacher in uh, Arizona, in America, who uh, did the course in Miracle Lessons and released about 27 illnesses. Uh, and shared his experience uh, of, of the miraculous happening. He ran, I believe he knew, he knew Gerald Jampolsky and set up an attitudinal healing center there in the States. And, um, and uh, people with very, very grave illnesses had released their illnesses through uh, application of spiritual principles. So this thing of applying the Course in Miracles, I'm only affected by the beliefs I hold in mind. Uh, and correcting them through the application of the course um, was something. Um, so I, I had uh, multiple addictions in my history as an addict, uh, where I was using things in the world just to escape feelings uh, and the pain of life and the suffering of life, like food addiction, workalism in the stock market, sex and love addiction, validation addiction, all you know, anything in the world to just stop the suffering, silence the the ego's torment. Uh, emptiness and that led to kidney failure uh, and a spiritual a near-death spiritual experience uh, in the Royal Free Hospital uh, and after that I started to be open to guidance and all kinds of spectacular spiritual experiences and I met the spiritual teacher uh, I mentioned in America I was led to him through spiritual experience and guidance and uh, he reported the use of the Course in Miracles and, and the relief of illnesses that had disappeared, 27 in his case. So I ferociously applied and I joined spiritual groups for releasing addiction. So your question, Terry, is absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's one of the things where um, it's a bit complicated uh, when, but definitely with things like painkillers, I always try and avoid painkillers to stop the pain. This is just my personal uh, way I did it. I, don't, I do recommend people use doctor's advice. But um, uh, the, the thing of um, uh, experiencing the symptoms without trying to run away from them, i.e. allowing them, and then canceling the beliefs, not trying to resist uh, physical symptoms. Like, uh, so I had three major illnesses uh, severe gout attacks where the feet would swell up in agony as the, as the skin would 
just expand at a rapid rate with horrific pain in the feet. I'd have asthma attacks where I felt like I could not breathe. And I had kidney failure, I was on a machine to keep me alive. And so there was extreme exhaustion. And the, one of the things I did was not to try and use um, medical aids to escape uh, uh, if I could, if I, if I had to, I would, but if I wouldn't, I would just feel them and be with them and not try and escape them or resist them or just try and not experience it. And also I was vigorously applying the course to just cancel. God did not create gout. It is not real. That's just a, a thought that I'm being affected by, which I picked up from the collective consciousness, a nightmare that I want to express. Um, God did not create kidney failure. It is not real. That's also like a program, a belief, a set of beliefs that I just picked up to express a nightmare in my in my ego separation, uh, uh, divorced from from the infinite love of God. So God did not create that. So it is not real. These are the just thoughts I'd made meaningful to me, and so I was experienced in my ego perception. Um, and um, and so the gout, asthma. You know, God did not create suffocation and the inability to breathe. Uh, God did not create constricted uh, bronchi, so it is not real. God did not create high uric acids in the blood after eating too much meat, so that is not real. God did not create those things. And, uh, and then not to escape it with pills to the best of my ability uh, and to feel that because uh, a spiritual principle which I picked up was if you resist something, uh, you keep it, you experience it. What you don't resist tends to vanish. So if I don't try and just repress that uh, breathlessness or that exhaustion or that pain in my feet, so I would just sit with the pain, I'd let go of the labeling. My ego would like to label it with pain or suffering or whatever, just let go of those thoughts and be with it. And, uh, and it would disappear, in, it'd take about four hours and then it would go into peace and stillness and, and love. And it was like one that just experienced it by not being afraid of it and experiencing it, it would vanish eventually. I did that with the breathlessness. I can't breathe. That's a thought. Just let it go. Just be with what is. And then the, uh, the breath would start coming back. The exhaustion. Every day I would just sit with the chronic exhaustion like death. And, and over the weeks and months, it became less and less. It's like it started to evaporate. And within... Um, within um, so this thing of not using uh, uh, medical aids or spe uh, the course would call it magical things, magical pills. Oh, I believe in this magic. I mean, if you believe in a magic thing, I, I believe it works. So I believe in using them sometimes. But generally, I didn't want to use the magic stuff and let uh, and say God did not create it and just allow the miracle to enter and not resist things that were coming up. And uh, the miraculous happened. Uh, so uh, within about um, three years, it took about three years of applying the course and not resisting the medical stuff, um, the, rheum uh, the rheumatology, the gout attacks became less and they stopped happening altogether and the rheumatologist at the hospital said, uh, we're discharging you from the rheumatology clinic, you no longer have gout. I once went to the asthma clinic, I was going there once uh, every, every so often, and they told me to breathe into this thing. I breathed it in and said, your lungs are fine. We're discharging you from the asthma clinic. Uh, I was just vigorously saying, God did not create uh, kidney failure. It is not real. And I was sitting with the exhaustion every day uh, and not trying to resist it or use any aids to try and escape it. I was on the dialysis machine, of course. Um, and, uh, and then suddenly I had a, 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 a um, as I was saying, it was not real. I was suddenly invited for a transplant. I'm on that transplant, and the uh, the exhaustion and the kidney failure symptoms are gone. So, this thing of applying spiritual principles, I do believe in using them. You know, if you're going to die and there's a magical aid, you know, it's best to use it. But um, but otherwise, applying the course because I see that it's deeper. The manifestation of that is more the the thoughts I'm holding in mind, I'm, I'm being affected by, you know, I, I hold nightmare thoughts in my mind, I pick up nightmare belief systems from the collective, and I start expressing those through the guilt that I'm holding and have not released through unforgiveness. So um, I hope I hope that answers the question, Terry, please uh, ask if it's not not a clear answer. Okay, 
Who has a question or a comment? Okay, Kirsty. Hi, um, Sabir. Uh, what really um, struck me about your uh, what you were just saying then was uh, you were going off to see a healer. I think I got this right. You were going off to see a healer and you said, I mustn't miss my chance. And that, that, that thought that you had, I mustn't miss my chance, I was just wondering if you could speak to that a little bit. Were you talking about you mustn't miss your chance to see a particular healer? Or was it more, I mustn't, that to me, that, as you said that, that just struck me as a kind of sudden shift into willingness that you'd not, perhaps not had before, uh, a willingness to give up everything. Uh, and that shift happened before you actually met the healer rather than during. I don't, I don't know if you, you understand what I mean by that. I was just wondering if you could speak to that a little bit. Yes, that, that's, that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking it. So um, it was a, it was a, a teacher of enlightenment. Uh, and um, so the idea of, um, uh, and I, I'd realized that there was, a, there's often in students, and I, I was aware of this, the, the terror of the death of the ego, the terror of the ego disappearing uh, forever, and the experience of an enlightenment reigning eternal forever. I mean, you could say it's what, um, so what I, and it was like, you know, to lose my old friend of my belief systems, my thoughts, my identity, uh, my, my ego as the thing that is me, uh, and for that to disappear, uh, never to return again. Uh, I, I believe that the ego uh, on that morning of waking to, to be one-to-one -one with the teacher of enlightenment with no escape, um, was uh, so terrifying to my ego that it had manifested a horrific gout attack and was coming up with ferocious negative thoughts that uh, call him up, you're in agony, uh, don't go. That's what my ego said, just don't go. I mean, today's not the day. Um, so, and then something deeper, it was like, it was, there was a knowingness, uh, something be beyond my ego knew that this was just my ego's fear of, of losing its dominion on my life and being the, the focus of, of my experience. And it didn't want to lose its existence as, as, as the thing that was me. And so I knew that that was really what was going on, even though it seemed that that, that physical pain in my foot and the huge ferocious negative thoughts that were uh, so loud seemed to be the thing that wanted not to meet the teacher at all costs. But there was something deeper and I knew I was, I was aware enough and I was starting after my near death spiritual experience, I was aware enough to know that was not the thing. I knew my ego was the cause of all my suffering. That it, you know, even though it was familiar and it's what I believed and identified with as myself, these collection of belief systems, which I was entertained by and thought it was me or, all my life and this body that I was identified, I knew that the infinite light, the miraculous, uh, the power of grace uh, had, you know, it had to be released for me to have my chance because I was in such huge suffering, gout, asthma, a machine to keep me alive, uh, that I wanted freedom. And if it meant I had to go in absolute pain, and I, I saw that only the power of a miracle enlightenment, a freedom from the bondage of my ego would offer me the chance from a life now which was quite hellish with illnesses. Uh, and so that thing which was beyond my ego, I knew that I had to not miss my chance if I had to walk in excruciating pain uh, and make it for that appointment with the teacher of enlightenment to be free of the suffering created by my ego. I knew that, you know, if I it was like to deny grace it's like when God tries to give you a gift and you say, no, thank you. Um, it's like I knew that wasn't a good, a good option uh, to, to listen to my ego and not take the chance. So I did. 
and uh, and in that white light spiritual experience, it's it seems that the power of the light, the infinite light and power that can dissolve pain and put you into a state of bliss beyond this world, it was worth it. It was the right choice. So it was the thing of spiritual discernment between my discerning whether my ego has my best interests uh, at heart or whether there's something beyond trying to call me to escape the grip of my own ego. Uh, I hope that answers the question. If not, please, please ask again. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sabir. Just, that really does. I'm just wondering, do you think yes. that if your ego hadn't have put up this ferocious defence and you just got up and gone along and knocked on the door and said hi then you would have had the same extraordinary experience of enlightenment or do you think it was the the fact that you'd overcome that enormous ego barrier that that um that created this enlightenment experience uh, that's a lovely question um uh, actually i've had um i've had a uh, it's a great question this thing of um, my ego putting up a huge fight when it thinks its its dominion is under threat, and then some deeper willingness or courage uh, beyond the ego uh, uh, takes over, and it's like that that willingness to face the defiance of the ego uh, with its horrific things. I do believe that does make the if you like the the student ready for the miracle, uh, you know, because often when my ego you know when my ego wants to do something it's easy uh usually it's not really um i don't call it it's not really um and fit because my ego always enjoys i mean if it's like you know do you want to eat a bucket of ice cream i mean my ego's not it's not going to be a ferocious uh, uh do you want to watch netflix the whole day i mean it's not going to put up much of a fight uh do you want to disappear your suffering forever and not me have me listen to you it's going to put up you know It'll manifest like huge gout. It'll say, look, that's the last thing I want to do in this world. Um, so often when that spiritual opportunity, the miracle happens and, and power comes from a place beyond the ego, it's like that battle and the ego loses. It seemingly loses its grip and something takes. I do believe that's, you know, um, you could say what you know what comes first the chicken or the egg but i think they're all simultaneously important an opportunity and going through the ego resistance i mean i really do believe if my ego doesn't put up a fight it's usually because my ego is getting great payoff like uh my ego doesn't have to be you know if someone said here's free ice cream uh, you know my ego is not going to put up a huge battle because it's going to um it's going to just keep my ego going because what's one of my uh, one of my things my ego loves you know ice cream. If I if someone told me like give up ice cream for for the rest of your life, you know my ego <laughs> probably put up more of a fight because it's like um, you know so. But if that if, if there was the willingness, then I think there would be great uh, you know a miracle would occur to see that the um, uh, that there's something there's a greater light beyond uh, just eating ice creams all the time. Um, did that answer the question? Please ask again. Yes, thank you, Sabir. That's lovely. Thank you. I have a, a question, a comment in chat. It says, thank you so much, Sabir, for sharing your spiritual journey to health. Warmest blessings to you and for everyone on this Zoom call. And thank you, Sabir and Miracle Network. And Dennis, would you like to say something? Sabir, thank you for your description of reality. Um, mine happened in the 70s, and I came out the same as you in tears from the most beautiful experience, and I wanted to stay there. And all of a sudden, I was back in this world, <laughs> and um, I had to remember I had legs on my body because I had to go downstairs. <laughs> And um, it was wonderful, but since then I've had all sorts of problems, health-wise. Um, but I've learned to accept things as they are, as a learning process. 
I don't worry about them anymore. And I, actually, I go to bed now. I'm 80 years of age. I've had prostate cancer, aneurysms, skin cancer. And I go into bed and I say, what's next? <laughs> but thank you for your description. It was wonderful to hear. Thank you so much. I really do identify with not wanting to leave that experience. OK, uh, we've come to the top of the hour. Uh, thank you so much, Sabia. That was wonderful. Got so much out of it. And take yourself off of uh, mute and show your appreciation to Sabia. Thank you, Sabia. Thank you, Sabia. Thank you so very much, Sabia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.